Hi, uh, I'm Alan Kraut, uh, University Professor of History at American University in Washington and President of the Organization of American Historians. Uh, my interests are in immigration and ethnic history and in the history of American medicine and public health. Uh, as part of a panel on immigration uh, legislation here at uh, the AHA, I talked a little bit about the role of Ellis Island uh, in the period uh, between the 1890s and the 1930s, a peak period in immigration to the United States. Uh, between the 1890s and the uh, 1920s, uh, over 20 million immigrants came to the United States, uh, many millions through Ellis Island. Ellis Island was the key immigration depot during this period. And uh, one of the aspects of the inspection and interrogation of immigrants was a medical inspection. And this was very important because in the 1880s, uh, Robert Koch in Germany, Louis Pasteur in France, had developed germ theory. And uh, one of the things that the inspection was designed to do is to prevent harmful pathogens from entering the United States on the bodies of immigrants that is to protect the American population from disease from abroad, but also to make sure that those who are coming into the United States were sufficiently healthy and robust so that they could earn their livings and wouldn't end up on the public dole. Uh, and so this inspection procedure uh, involved the uniformed officers of the U.S. Marine Hospital Service conducting a line inspection uh, of immigrants who had traveled uh, in steerage to the United States. First and second class were inspected in their cabins, uh, but those who traveled steerage came through Ellis Island and were subjected to an individual medical inspection. And one of the things we did on the panel was to show a slide of a federal officer uh, looking at the eyes of immigrants, because one of the excludable diseases was trachoma. Uh, and uh, the eyelid of the immigrant was being inverted by the inspector to look for the telltale sores uh, of trachoma. And after the inspection, uh, the inspector would wipe the instrument used, a, a uh, button hook used for ladies' opera length gloves and uh, buttoned boots, and wiping it on a Lysol impregnated rag, hardly what we would call sterile technique uh, in our era. Uh, but this was uh, an important part of the inspection because certainly those infected with trachoma would be held out and uh, possibly even sent, sent home again. One of the interesting things about the uh, interrogation and inspection of immigrants at Ellis Island and other depots is that the rejection rate was remarkably low. It was actually 2 to 3 percent per year though uh, the, uh, the reasons for the percentage excluded based on health concerns was actually on the increase during the period that we talked about, partly because of the improved technology, the use of x-ray technique, and, and so on, improved testing. Uh, but the concern always was to admit. And the reason why was because the United States was in the midst of industrialization. It needed a plentiful, low-cost supply of labor coming into the United States. And so the emphasis was rather on admitting rather than excluding, but excluding those who would not contribute uh, sufficiently to the productivity of the American workforce. Uh, and so that was very, very important. This was a briefing held by the National History Center uh, of the American Historical Association and uh, members of Congress were invited to send representatives, especially their legislative assistants, uh, to hear about the history of immigration legislation. Uh, with the understanding uh, that history has an important role to play in the construction of contemporary policy. It's very important for legislators and for those who assist them in reforming American immigration policy to understand where we've been before in the construction of immigration legislation and what the factors were that went into the construction of immigration legislation at an earlier time. What were the underlying prejudices and preferences uh, that went into the argument and the discussion over the legislation that was passed in 1924, the National Origins Quota System, and then later the revision of that system in 1965. And so uh, it's important, we think, for historians to be heard in this debate.
because we have an important message to send.